this match brings to the newsreel screen one of the greatest amateur teams that ever wore football boots. Amateurs, but already they've beaten nearly all the crack professionals. These boys have made the name of the Trojans Club world famous. In pace and ball control, they have no equals anywhere. Once near the goal, it's next door to a dead serve. Now watch another onslaught on the enemy. Setchley has the ball, and he's fetching it along like a mother nursing a baby. Yes, it's a goal. And that brings the total of Setchley's goals up to 34 for the season already. This young man is one of the most dazzling spots in the team with all highlights. And before the great charity game is being taken in the he gives you this interview with the team. Will the Trojans maintain their wonderful record? Or will the big guns of mighty Arsenal blow them sky high? Eddie Hapgood, left back and Arsenal captain. Bryn Jones, he cost Arsenal as much as a war and he's almost as dangerous. Leslie Jones, another international. Cliff Bastin, the boy wonder. Football is the only game he ever wants to play. Don't know what my wife will say. The three musketeers, Alf Fields, Preston, and George Mayo. The one and only George Allison. Mind you, don't lose that type in. <laughs> Kirshen, a streak of lightning on the right wing. Bremner, born with a silver football in his mouth, but he busted. Ted Drake, centre forward, tall, dark and handsome. Swindon, the goalkeeper, still in his winter woolies. <laughs> and Tom Whitaker, their famous trainer. Now for the Trojans. Here's Francis Kinderlet, secretary and organist. really good, Frank. You do, absolutely. <laughs> really good. Corbin Gull, Wellcock left wing, Creef left back, Garrow centre half, Brown left half. Then there's Bredge, centre forward, and Jerner, inside left. And Charlie right back, the Trojans' brilliant captain. <laughs> now here's a man to watch, Maring. This is his last match before he gets married. After that, his wife will watch him. Setchley has a lady friend. It's Helen the Trojan's mascot. They pin a badge on Helen every time they win. Setchley looks after her. He's the only one of the team she can trust. Now for the Trojan's dark horse, Jack Doyce, inside right. Doyce has only just joined the team, but he's a well-known amateur, and great things are expected of him. You hear that, Doyce? Well, he's not here, Mr. Kendall. Huh? Well, I hope there's nothing wrong. He'll be there. This. But this time, you may be in the, the team yet, Mr. Rail. <laughs> Oh, very interesting indeed. We're showing that all over the country. Are you really? Oh, yes, thank you. Well, Frank, it's 12 o'clock now. We'll meet in the stadium at 3. That's right. We'll begin wheeling us off at 10 minutes past, what? Oh, I hope not. <laughs> I'm sure not. Program! Program! Official program and team. Thank you. Program! There you are! Trojan or Arsenal? Trojan! Where are your colours? What the hell is it you think I'm wearing? Up the Arsenal! Up the Trojan's Arsenal! Above all, boys, you must respect this amateur side. They're one of the finest amateur teams we've seen for years. They don't play your game, they play the attacking game. All their five forwards go up at once. And their right half and left half, they go through at every possible chance. And when those two wing half-backs go through, I want our inside forwards, left and right, go after them. Don't let them get away with it. Now, that's important. You get that, Eddie? Yes, we got it. The prestige of the Arsenal's at stake. I'm more keen to win this match than I am to win 90% of our games during the season. Time yes. for the boys to change, Mr. Allison. Oh, OK, Tom. Well, carry on, boys. Get on. Could be easy this afternoon, boys. Who is this, Dewey? Oh, good afternoon, Mr. Kindler. You're not going to find it too easy, boys, you know. Hello, Tim. Hello, Bill. Hello, Frank. Everyone here, Carter? All except Mr. Morning, sir, and Mr. Doyce. Oh, Doyce will be here. He won't miss this game. And Phil Morning's probably with this fiasco. <laughs> Rail, you better get changed in any case. Never know where you are, the fellow like Doyce. Well, there are only 20 minutes to go. Now, really, Gwen, you're not upset about that shamozzle at the flat, are you? What, you expect me to be tickled to death? Well, I can explain about that girl, all right, but it's rather a long story. I'll tell you tonight. Tonight's off. Oh, you're thinking of Phil Morring? Perhaps. You met his family yet? No, well, they're away traveling. Mm, I thought you hadn't. They're nice people, but a bit stuffy. They've got a great deal of that, you know, and he won't see a penny of it if he marries you. Love in an attic. Oh, well. Touching. I'm marrying Phil, not his family. You're not telling me. Dear me, I do believe we're quite annoyed. We'll soon settle that. It's the last time, Jack. Of course. I'll see you tonight. So sorry, Jack, but it's all over. The key will still be on top of the door. 
I'm so sorry, Inga. I know I'm late, but the traffic was awful. Hello, Phil. Hello. Well, I tried to get you last night and this morning. Hello, Inga. How's the cousin from Sweden? You think you go home, no? You always make the same joke, Phil. But, Gwen, why didn't you tell me you couldn't see me last night? Uh, I couldn't. It, it was too sudden. My Aunt Bessie was taken ill. Darling, I'm so glad to see you. Have you missed me? Have I? Come on, Gwen. We never get to our seats. Lord, I must fly. I'll see you after the game, Gwen. Yes, Bye, darling. Inga. Better take Doyce's shirt, George. That's a good girl. Isn't she lovely? Ooh. Break away, Setsley. You won't be fit for the match. Doyce! About ready time, too. Look here, Doyce. You're part of this team, you know. I expected you here hours ago. Sorry, I was in conference. Anyway, I see Phil Murray isn't here yet. Well, perhaps everybody is here. We may be able to play some football. Shouldn't wonder. Sorry, Rel. Heavens, Eddie. What's this? I haven't got a shirt. Shut up. Just a No shirts anywhere. Just a minute. Budge! Where are these boys' shirts? There's none of them here. I left every player's shirt on his old oak. There he is. Got them. He's got them all on. It's going to be cold out there with nothing to do in goal. Right Don't tell me the jolly old rules let you down. Yes, old boy, I had to abandon it. Oh, tut, tut. Now, come along, Mr. Doyce, you're next on the table. So, she won't let you alone, eh, Phil? Why don't you mind your own business? Why don't you grow up? Now, get a move on, boys. Only ten minutes to go. Good afternoon, everybody. This is George Allison calling from the Arsenal Stadium, London. A great day has arrived at last. We're about to see this long-anticipated charity match between the Trojans, the famous amateur team, and the Arsenal. We have been fortunate in securing the services of a very famous commentator. I'm perfectly certain you will all recognize the well-known voice of Mr. E.B.H. Emmett, who is appearing today by kind permission of the Gomont British News. Now, Mr. Emmett, it's up to you to give us all the thrills of the match. Well, I certainly will do my best, and I'm sure it will be a thrilling match. I certainly hope so, because there's a record crowd here, an enormous crowd. The stadium's absolutely packed. What are you impressing, George? Come on, oh, he's trying to get the right number, the right side up. Come on, lads, come on, you toss. And the teams are coming out now. Arsenal coming out first. Led by their captain, Eddie Hatfield. Now the program, led by Charlie. Yeah, I like the look of that fellow Doyce, don't yes. you? Yes, Tom, I do. I'm keen to see how he gets on this afternoon. The band has blown itself out, and the referee's just bringing out the ball, so it won't be long now. The two captains are trotting up to the centre to shake hands with everybody in sight and toss for choice of ends. Eddie Hapgood has the coin. Charlie calls to it. But yes, Trojans are defending the clock end of the field. Arsenal kick off, Drake to Bryn Jones and out to Bastion on the left wing. Now back to Bryn Jones. Torben punches away. Drake has it on the right and he's going to shoot. But Torben saves it nicely again and clears. Doyce hits it. That boy certainly looks good. Now the Trojans are getting the ball away into the Arsenal half. Wilcock has it, passes to Brown. Hapgood tackles him. Brown still has it and he shoots, but Swindon clears. Terrific excitement as the game swings away from the Arsenal goal. Play in the Trojans' half, the ball goes back. Arsenal left back has it, he bangs it up. Up it goes, and Jonah and Bremner jump for it. Wait here, Ben. Wait, wait, cut the grass. The ref can't see. <laughs> 
The game is on again, up in the centre of the field, and now it's Arsenal's turn to attack. Ball goes up to Kirshen. He's racing on. He shoots, and a grand save. Corner against Trojan. Oi, bro! Oi! Don't keep blowing that whistle! Blow your nose down! Yeah. Kirshen takes it nicely in, but the amateur boys are onto it like lightning. Now Brim Jones has it. Don't muck it about. Pass to Bastin. And the boys away. The centre. Shoot! No, another grand save by Tom. This is a terrific game. Amateur, professional, they're all playing like heroes. Now Mayer is onto it and he passes up. But Garrow has it. Doyce takes it away. Keep an eye on Doyce. He shoots and Swindon tips it over, giving a corner against Arsenal. How do you like that, Mr. Ellison? Oh, it's not a goal yet. Don't hold the ball so much, Doyce. You're not all that good. I don't need your advice. Sedgley takes the kick. The Arsenal defence have got it away. Now Murring has it. Look out there. Hey! Doyce and Murring in collision. Murring's hurt by the look of it. Oh, he banged his head. And the referee drops the ball and the game is on again. Arsenal have it. That's Drake coming down now like a hurricane. Shoot! And Torben saves the game. Nearing the end of the first half now, and there's no score yet. Here's Arsenal pressing again. Drake has it. Out on the left to Bryn Jones. Bryn runs in. It's dangerous now. Back to Drake. Drake's onto it. Over to Kirshen. This time it's a goal. First blood to the Arsenal. One nil. And about 30 seconds to go for half time. Yes, this game is living up to all its promise of thrill. A real dogfight, backwards and forwards. And when you consider the Arsenal reputation among the professional teams, you certainly must hand it to these Trojans. They're putting up a wonderful show. The score at half-time is Arsenal 1, Trojans 0. And that's just how we like it. Well, never mind, lads. It's only the first time. It won't be to like that again. I'm sorry, man. Morning. Let me have a look at that cut. Sorry about that, Phil. Stay in position next half, Jack. Who's that for? Mr. Doyce of the Trojans. It's marked urgent. How are we going, Sarge? Well, one up, son. Yippee! Here, listen, boys. Look here, all you've got to do is to quicken up in this second half, and you've got to absolutely beat. I know you're all a bit nervous, but there's nothing in the world to worry about, see? Oh, I say, Doyce, uh, try and remember you're part of a team. Don't be so selfish with the ball. For heaven's sake, will you let me play my own game? No, no, don't do that. We don't want to lose the match. Right. Now, then, let's have a look at this. Do you need to stitch, Jimmy? No, no, sir, it's just a graze. Mm. After this, you're going to go after that. Right, sir. Yeah. Telegrams to you, gentlemen. Congratulations from your girlfriends. Mr. Tully, Setchley, Garrow, Torben, Helen. Who's Helen? Women are not allowed here, you know. Ah, but that's Helen of Troy, the face that sank a thousand ships. Say thank you, Helen. Hey, there you go. I almost thought Helen was a horse. Oh, there's a part for Mr. Doyce. Thank you. you, Mr. Doyce, one of your admirers, I suppose. Mr. Setchley. Thank you. One down, you'll get on this half. Absolutely. Where's Kindled? Went out the other way, I think. Come on, chaps. Get a move on. Come along, 
Mr. Murray. For heaven's sake, get a move on. Teams are coming out now for the second half. Good job. It all depends on the first 15 minutes, Jimmy, whether our boys can hold them. Oh, no, they'll do it all right, Mr. Kindlewood. <laughs> Trojans kick off this time. Bridge kicks off to Doyce, and Doyce snaps it out to the left wing. Setchley has it, and he's racing ahead in the best Bastion style. It's a goal. It must be. No, Swindon dives. He's got it smothered. Quick. He's up, and he's cleared beautifully. Bravo, Swindon. Bravo. I couldn't have done it better myself. Trojans again attacking. They're going all out to wipe off that odd goal. Sensation. Here's an appeal for hands in the penalty area. Yes, the referee's allowing it. This is serious. Well, you're telling me. The first nine men I've seen without a dog. What a wreck. Ten and twenty, Ross. Joyce is taking the kick. Is this the equaliser? <laughs> yes, he scored like a bullet in the top corner. With a crashing drive, Joyce scored from the penalty, and it's Arsenal 1, Coden 1. Oh, what a basket. <laughs> What's that you said? I said, what a blast for us, sir, didn't I? I've had my eye on you all the match. That's what I thought. You let me down the game. <laughs> <laughs> Just waiting now, Whistle to kick off after that goal. There it goes, Drake to Bryn Jones and over to Bremner. Arsenal are pressing now, they're racing forward to the Trojans' goal. Bastin has it. And he shoots and Torben saves. He's playing a wonderful game, that Trojan goal. Look, look, what's the matter with Doyce? By Jove, he does look bad. Doyce has just collapsed like a log. It must be some sort of a faint or something. I didn't see him get hit. This is a most unlucky accident for the Trojans. Those amateur boys have been playing really magnificent football. Now to lose their crack inside right, at a critical time like this, it's appalling luck. Joyce looked pretty bad too, but nobody seems to know what's the matter with him. Inga, he's dead. Joyce is being carried off now by the ambulance men, and the whistle goes to resume the game. What's up, Tom? Can't tell, Doctor. I don't like the look of him at all. Trojans are playing wonderfully plucky football. Don't forget they're a man short from now on. Now shouts, come on the ten men. They've got a sporting chance, but I don't see how they can possibly hold Arsenal now. From the first kick-off, it's been a game of sensations. A strange collision of two Trojans. Arsenal's crashing goal. Game's a penalty. Equalizing penalty. Topped off in the dramatic collapse of the new Trojan player halfway through the second half. Gentlemen, I'm sorry to have to announce to you a piece of bad news. Jack Doyce is very seriously injured. It has been decided to abandon the match. But both sides are naturally anxious for a decision, so there will be a replay next Wednesday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Just a minute, boys, please. Mm. How did it happen? It's a bad business. You can change, but you'll have to stay in your dressing rooms. Frank, I've got to get away for a minute. I'll be back. I'm sorry, Philip. It's, it's out of my hands now. All right, boys, get in the bath. Listen, boys, we can change now, but you've got to remain behind a bit. Boss's orders. Come on, Doug. Let's get going. 
I can't tell you anything, gentlemen. You've got to wait and see Mr. Alice. Well, where is he? I don't know. If I knew, I could tell you. Well, where is I don't know anything about it. I can't tell you. We've got to get some dope on this. Wait a minute. Please, what's happened to Mr. Doyce? I'm sorry, young lady. I'm afraid he's dead. Sorry, boys. You'll get the story later. Who was that girl? Did she give her name? No, sir. Her face seemed familiar, though. That's what I thought. Hi, George. What's the big idea? Get me Scotland Yard, please. Whitehall. One, two. One, two. Ladies, ladies, these skirts weren't provided for you by nature. They are meant to enhance your beauty, to allure. You must swish them about a bit and make them look attractive. Do you follow me? Yes, yes sir. sir. We've only got till Wednesday, ladies. The fair name of the Metropolitan Police Beauty Chorus is at stake. Now, you've got to make it alluring. Now, follow me. Check this lady here. Yes, Clinton, what is it? I thought you were at the yard. Yes? A case, Inspector. A case? But, man, I've only got four days to get this show, and I can't take a case now. The Assistant Commissioner thinks it might be murder. Oh. You know, you oughtn't to be doing all this, sir. These men will never be the same again. Oh, that's something to be thankful for. Where's the, um, where's the body? Down to the Arsenal Stadium, one of the players. With the Arsenal? Let me see. Yes, this it is. <laughs> you haven't seen this one before, have you? Not bad for ten, Bob. Guaranteed to put any suspect at his ease at first sight. You and your hat, sir. Well, it's very suitable. What of all these outdoor fellas with, um, with shorts on? Uh, what's his name? An amateur, John Doyce. Glory be. Well, I'm glad it's in the hands of the police anyway. Huh. This would happen on a Saturday. Who was near him when he fell? Nobody, actually. The ball came from a clearance of the Trojan goal, fell in front of Doyce, the inside right, who faltered. Marring the right half, seeing that, ran forward, picked up the ball, followed by Bryn Jones, our inside left. They carried the ball on. At the same time, Leslie Jones moving forward here, Seeing Doyce faltering and stumbling, he stopped dead. Yeah, but nobody was actually near Doyce when he fell? No, not within five yards of him. Well, nobody could have touched him, Inspector. It must have been his heart. I've seen it happen before. Yes, I dare say you're right, Mr. Kindred. <laughs> well, I'll go and see the team, Mr. Hunt. Leslie, yes, this sir? is Inspector Slade. How do you do? How do you do? You'd be the nearest man to Doyce when he fell, wouldn't you? Yes, I was, Tom. Can you tell us what happened? When he had the ball, I, I rushed forward to tackle him. Just as I got there, stumbled and fell to the ground. What did he look like? He was sweating badly and looked very grey. Grey? Yes, he looked terrible. Terrible. Very hot in here, isn't it? It is, rather. <laughs> Thank you so much. What's all the mystery about? Why are we being kept here? Looks as if you'll be in the replay, George. So what? Nothing. What's biting you? The devil you're driving at. Oh, shut up, George. You're getting nervy. Well, who wouldn't be? 
Dead, isn't he? After all, there must be somebody here who knows him. <coughs> I'm sorry to keep you waiting, gentlemen. There are just one or two routine questions I'd like to ask. Now, did any of you see Doyce eat or drink anything at half-time? Well, he took a slice of lemon, but then so did most of the other boys. Yes, of course. What about the parcel? Yes, that's right. He got a parcel at half-time. A parcel? Did anybody see what is in it? It's only a small thing, sir. The uh, commissioner brought it in and I gave it to Mr. Doyce myself. Yes. Where are his clothes? Over here, sir. Clinton, get that commissioner. Right, sir. <laughs> it was only a small thing, sir. Uh, right, too, and uh, he sat down here and started to unpack it. Oh, there's nothing in here. <laughs> Almost twins, aren't we? <laughs> Uh, where, who was, uh, who was next to him? I was. Is that what you're looking for? Well, that's the right in the parcel, wasn't wait, it? Wait, wait. Don't touch. Here's the man, sir. Who delivered this? Just check messenger, sir. Check on that, will you, Clinton? Yes, sir. There's something about else, that sir? girl, sir. What? There was she a girl. She called here after the match, sir, asking for Doyce. That's right. She spoke to me. I told her Doyce was dead. Did she say anything? No, sir. She pretty nearly fainted, sir. I see. Thank you, Sergeant. Thank, Thank you, sir. sir. There's one other thing. Did anyone try to get into these rooms from half-time onwards until the team returned? No, sir. I'd have seen anybody who did, sir. Oh, that's all I want to know. Oh, Clinton. Yes, sir. Check all this litter, will you, and see if you can find anything. Very good, sir, but what am I supposed to look for? I haven't the faintest idea. Yet. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Allison. Clever, isn't it? Thank you, Mr. Allison. You found something? How long are you going to keep us here, Inspector? Oh, not very long. Oh, Clinton. Yes, sir? We're looking for a small, sharp-pointed object. And if you find it, be very careful. Very good, sir. In hand, if I can understand it. Sounds a bell one moment and his heart stops the next. Have you looked at his left thumb? I missed that. Don't take it to heart. You were meant to. Poison. Alcohol under the action. What now? Well, first find out what is in that parcel and who that girl was. Eh? Just a moment, Meadows. Bring your things. Come along. All right, Sergeant. You can stop playing sandcastles. Hey, Doctor. Oh, very well. Oh, hello, Mr. Kinderlet. Where have you been? Well, I needn't keep you any longer, gentlemen. Dr. Meadows rather thinks that death was caused by an obscure form of tetanus, contracted through a scratch on the thumb. Isn't that so, Doctor? Eh? Oh, yes, quite so, yes, yes. But we must find the object on which Doyce injured himself, owing to the risk of infection. Therefore, in your own interests, Dr. Meadows thinks we ought to have a search. Eh, hey, Dr. Meadows? Yes, absolutely essential. Very tactful of you, Inspector. Why not say Doyce was murdered and have done with it? Keep your head rail. What the inspector suggests is only common sense. Oh, thank you very much. Of course, if you object to being searched... Not me. Go right ahead. Yes, let's get it over. Good. Well, I'll send a couple of men to help Sergeant Clinton. Oh, would you mind staying with the team? Uh, Mr. Allison. Now, look, Allison. Rail was right. So Doyce was murdered. Yes, that search was a blind. Clinton won't find a thing. Whoever killed Doyce got rid of whatever it was ages ago. He's lying about the stadium somewhere, waiting till the murderer sees his chance to get it back. Oh, good heavens. I suppose you'll want half the yard down here now looking for clues. Not on your life. I wait for the clues to come to me. Now, listen, George. Uh, do you mind me calling him George? No, not at all. Now, no. about this girl, uh, what did she look like? Oh, she was tall, fair, very pretty. And you know, both the commissioner and myself are convinced we've seen her somewhere before. What is she wearing? Oh, a long white coat with blue trimmings. A funny sort of hat oh. with a feather in it. Well, like you have there. I thought this is a model. I beg to report, sir. I know, not a thing. No, sir. Oh, bear up. Look, I want to see these men again, but informally at their own convenience. Can you arrange that? Well, we've fixed a game of golf for them at the dike tomorrow. Would that do? Fine, I'll be there. Clinton, the carriage waits. Adios. Goodbye.
and I say to myself, young lady, you're up to something. Uh, what time is this? It was about five o'clock. She thought I didn't see her. Ha-ha, <laughs> but see her I did. Yes, and I saw her last night too. She was here last night? With him. Very late it was. They came here in a taxi and left together again today in one, about two o'clock. And it's my opinion, she was here all night. You're telling me. Never seen her here before? No, sir. But I have it in my mind I've seen her face somewhere, often. But I can't think where. What is she wearing? She had a long white coat on with blue ornamentations. I think someone's been here before, sir. By Jove, I believe you hit on something, Clinton. Looks as if this fellow was in the advertising business, sir. Yeah, what they call a layout man. What's that? Sounds like a piano, sir. Next flat, sir. That's the composer. Yeah, that's what he thinks. Mr. Doyce was evidently fond of the ladies. Hmm? He was no end of a nuisance, sir. The neighbors were always complaining about him. Did you recognize the girl in the white coat from any of these? I don't know, sir. She was far better looking than any of them. Here's his diary, sir. Oh, then she did miss some. Perhaps Pad Risky can help us. Will you stop that row? Live and let live, Doyce. How about that stinking row you kicked up this morning with your friend? If you don't shut up, I'll come in and wring your neck. Oh, you will, will you? How'd you do? Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought it was young Doyce. Who are you? I'm Inspector Slade of the Criminal Investigation Department. Uh, can you tell me who the man was that Doyce had the row with? Well, as a matter of fact, I didn't catch a word, but I, I think it was something about some girl. Uh, when was this? In the middle of my prestissimo. <laughs> now, what time is it? Oh, just before lunch, about one. Oh, thank you so much. And by the way, will you tell young Doyce from me that if there are any more of these infernal rows, I... Oh, right, I'll, I'll tell him when I see him. Oh. Did you see anyone come here about one o'clock? No, I thought not. Where's the phone? On the writing desk, sir. Oh. What are you going to do now, sir? Get the yard to find that girl with a white coat. Where's the W? Oh, hey. If she was here at the time, she, uh, she must have heard something. Hello? Uh, Scotland Yard? Uh, Inspector Slade speaking. Give me the information bureau. Sergeant Smithers. Oh, there's no prestissimo again. Oh, Smithers? I want this information to go to the evening papers at once. What are you doing, Gwen? What are you looking at me like that for? Why did you go when you left me at the stadium this afternoon? Oh, for heaven's sake, I had something to do. I just remembered at the studio. What does it matter? You're not to say anything, do you understand? Why do the police want you? Is it because... Why did you say today that Jack Doyce was dead? But I didn't. Crazy, I... I couldn't have said it. Gwen, you must tell me. What happened today? I can't. Oh, I've been a fool. There's something else, too, I can't tell you. But, Inga, you must stick by me, do you understand? And don't ask me any questions. If it's Phil, I can't see him. I can't see him like this. Inga, make him go away. Make it all right with him. Oh. 
Lorenka, is Gwen in? Yes, Phil, but she's not well. She's so upset. About Doris? Of course, we're all upset about Jack. She is not feeling very well, and, and I shouldn't want her tonight if I were you. Oh, you think I go home, eh? Yes, I think you do. Okay. Well, I'll be playing golf in the morning with the boys. I'll pop around when I get back. That's right. I tell Gwen. Enjoy yourself. Bye, Inga. Bye. Now, where's Doyce's diary? I must put my thinking cap on. Ah, oh, just the thing. A headgear peculiarly conducive to thought, eh, Clinton? Uh, let's have a look. Very interesting. Very... You know, Sergeant Smithers getting a bit broad on the hips. That's the second time he's split that. Very interesting and illuminating. There's an entry here for February the 24th, 120 pounds. Somebody called S. Now, give me a girl's name beginning with S. Sylvia, Sybil, Sitch. Sitch? Step. That psyche you fool begins with a P. Let's have a look. Now, here's another. March the 19th, 75 pounds S cash. Now, why cash? Blackmail, sir. Maybe. Yep. Hello? All right, I need here. Go on. Inspector Slade's office. Home office pathologist speaking, sir. Yep. Hello? State speaking. Yes. Yes. Well, keep right on with it. Right, thank you. Goodbye. It was poison. They don't know what yet. One of the digitalium groups. Setsley's a chemist, sir. What? Hello, yes. Yes. Slade speaking. What? They did. They didn't, huh? All right, keep a close watch and don't touch a thing. Right, goodbye. That's the stadium speaking. Somebody tried to break into the treatment room, was disturbed and got away. The treatment room, sir? Yes, Clinton, you ass. Don't you see? Now we know it's murder. I've left everything as it was, sir. Excellent. What are we looking for, sir? Hang to find know, but we've got to find it. The only thing is, mind you don't prick yourself on anything and replace everything exactly where you find it. You've got to finish this job in three days. Why? <laughs> because of the replay. <laughs> no, because of the concert. You know, Clinton, it's heartbreaking to be a producer. All my life I've longed for the glamour of the footlights, the applause of the audience. Yes, sir, and here we are, just a couple of plain policemen, and we don't even know what we're looking for, sir. Clinton. Sterilised horsehair. Oh, this is too easy. Killer. Well, you've got to hand it to our murderer. He's no fool, but he didn't expect the treatment room to be sealed. And that's where we're going to get him. Oh. Replace those seals exactly, and not a word to a soul that I've been in there. Very good, sir. <laughs> now, Clinton, did I say three days? Yes, sir. We'll make it in two. Now let's go and see how those boys play golf. There you are, Ted. Pick the bones out of that. <laughs> you don't look so dashed pleased at yourself. Listen, you fellows are too darn gloomy. Now, what I think about Doyce is that... Oh, shut up! Oh, 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 sit down. Come and sit down. Back to the bazaar, you. Hello, Slade. Good of you to come. Have a drink. Oh, thank you so much. I'll have a whiskey and soda, if you don't mind. Morning, Slade. Hello. Just waiting for the rain to stop as usual. Have a drink, Sergeant. <laughs> well, um... It's all right, Sergeant. We're off duty. Thank you, sir. I'll have the same. Not Good morning, whiskey. Inspector. Have you decided who to arrest yet? That's all I've been waiting for. Yeah, what do you mean you've been come waiting for? Hey, don't you touch me! Hey, hey, hey! Please, please, go around! Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, hey. I wonder where Tom is. Excuse me, Slade, will you? And all unconscious of their doom, the little victims play, is that? Yeah. But of course, that was equally true of Doyce, you know, Kindlet. Yes, I know. This is a rotten business, Slade. 
I know my men and I like them. I've built this team up from absolutely nothing. If one of them turns out to be a murderer, it smashes up everything we've worked for. Yes, I understand. Tell me, was anybody hurt at the game on Saturday? Hmm? Yes, Moring was. Doris got out of position and barged him and Moring grazed his head. And I suppose he had it dressed in the treatment room. Yes, it is, as a matter of fact. <laughs> Excuse me, will you? Oh, good shot. All alone? Sometimes I prefer my own company. I had a chat with most of the others, so I thought perhaps I'd... Uh... Have a go at me? Far away, Inspector, but I'm afraid I can't help you very much. Oh, well, one never knows, one never knows. You knew Doyce pretty well, didn't you? No more than the others. He didn't exactly hate the fair sex, did he? I don't know anything about Doyce's women. Oh, well, at any rate, you use the plural. There was a girl called Stella or Sheila or something. She used the stadium last Saturday. I fancy she and Doyce are pretty friendly, weren't they? I tell you, Slade, Doyce's love life is a blank, as far as I'm concerned. OK, OK, it's just an idea. I said, you, um, you mind if I have a pot of that? One moment, the girl. Hi, Inspector, please. The girl with the white coat. So that's the girl that went to Doyce's flat. No wonder everybody recognized her. Well, she, she's, a, she's an advertisement model. Uh, Clinton, check up on her. Right, sir. Great Scott, that's Phil Morring's girl. Morring? So that's why Doyce wasn't at the pictures on Saturday. She was with him at his flat. Shut up, Setsu. Brighton police traced her as easy as falling off a log, sir. Her name's Gwen Lee, 6 Welford Mews, Baker Street. All right, hop in. Right, sir. What time did Phil say he'd be here? Well, he didn't tell. He said he'd try and come back quick. You tell him, Gwen? Yes? Do you think I'm a fool? If the police want me, they'll have to find me. Maybe they do. And then what you tell Phil? Phil loves me, he'll believe me. Anyway, I can handle Phil. I always have done. I'll go. Hello, Phil. No, it's not Phil. It's Inspector Slade. Uh, Anthony Slade, Criminal Investigation Department. Uh, this is Sergeant Clinton. May we come in? Yes, sir. What do you want? Oh, just a word. Uh, would you mind closing that door? It's rather chilly after the rain. Oh, what a delightful room. Oh, Madam Butterflies. Delicious. Oh, I beg your pardon. I... Uh, would you mind introducing me? I heard the name. I'm Inge Larson. Please. What do you want? I should love a cup of tea. I made you coffee. Oh, uh, uh, if you could find a piece of cake, I'd be so... Well, you can't buy Jack Doyce, I suppose. No, not at all. We don't want to dwell on that. We've all been indiscreet in our time. Now, um, won't you sit down? You see, the trouble with little lapses like these is that they make other people jealous. Now, what we have to do in a case like this is to find out the motive for the murder. Someone to whom Doyce did an injustice. Well, that covers a lot of people. Yes, uh, you'll pardon my saying so, Miss Lee, but I, I think he treated you very badly. You're not suggesting that I have... No, no, not for a moment. Oh, by Jove, what a lovely ring. Oh, of course, I was forgetting. You and you and Morring are engaged, aren't you? Yes. Yes, a charming fellow. Uh, very well to do, I believe. Tell me, was he very jealous? Well... Ah, oh, no coffee. But do not listen to him. He's trying to trap you. No, 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 young lady. Don't tell him anything. He can't make you. What's the matter with you? I can look after myself. But, Gwen, it isn't you. It's Philip. <coughs> the uh, kettle is boiling. Would you mind? Uh, Clinton, help her, will you? Very good, sir. You were at Doyce's flat on Friday night. You know who came to see him on Saturday morning. Somebody who had a quarrel with Doyce. Was it Modding? I tell you, I don't know anything. Now, it's no good trying to shield a murderer. That won't help at all. It's much safer to come out of the truth. Who should I be shielding? Well, that's what I'm here to find out. Now then, was it Morring? Now, you look here, miss. Now, listen, young lady. Gwen is not shielding anyone. I tell you the truth. Inga, 
It's because she knows her job, if people know she's with toys. Yes, it's very clever, but I still want that cup of coffee. Clinton. Yes, sir. See that she makes it this time. She won't make it for me, sir. I make it. Is that true? Yes. But, my dear Miss Lee, why on earth didn't you tell me? You are quite human, you know. The trouble is that people don't trust the police. I've known of dozens of cases where the... Don't tell me, the coffee. What, only two cups? Oh, no, but I insist. We that... don't want any, thank you. Oh, well, Clinton, will you join me? I'd love it, sir. Oh, and a real Swedish cake. How delicious. Mm. I oughtn't, but I really must. All right, Clinton, I'll go. Oh, hello, morning, old chap. Do come in just in time. Excuse me, man. Sure. I'm afraid I've beaten you to it. Oh, anyway, it's the most amazing thing. Uh, uh, look who's here. We were just talking about you. Uh, just having some coffee. Won't you join us? No? Well, do sit down, everybody. Oh, I see. Morning, I can see that you're at a loss. You're wondering why I'm here. Well, we've had the most interesting little chat. You know, women are the most extraordinarily difficult people to understand. Uncertain, coy, and hard to please. Sugar, sir? Uh, one, please. What are you doing here? Oh, purely social. As a matter of fact, I wanted to invite these charming ladies to the concert on Wednesday, the, the Metropolitan Police Follies. I'm the producer. Could I interest you in a ticket? No, you couldn't. Oh, no, of course. You may be detained elsewhere. <laughs> well? Skull. <coughs> so the Swedes make coffee with Epsom salts. Well, under the circumstances, we'd better be running along. No, 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 please don't get up, anybody. I expect you two want to have a chat together. I'll be seeing you quite soon. Come along, Clinton. <laughs> well, I know where I am now. You and Doyce must have thought I was a fool. Well, let me explain. I had hoped that you'd come to your senses. Oh, I, I know I've been a fool, but, but these things just happen, and all the time they don't mean anything. We love each other, Phil. Can't we forget it ever happened? It's a bit late for that now, isn't it? Late? Doyce is dead. But, but I don't understand you. Oh, you wouldn't. Phil, you've got to listen to me. We used to be so happy together. We could be again. I'm sorry, Gwen, I'm through. But darling, I promise you, everything's all right now. Please, Phil, listen to me. What's happened? Gwen, come, sit down. You. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? You're in love with him. You turned him against me. Gwen, you're mad. I've never seen you like this. He thinks he's finished with me, doesn't he? Well, I haven't finished with him. I could put Phil in such a tough spot if I wanted to. They think he did it, don't they? Well, supposing he did. Supposing they're not so far wrong. What do you mean? Hate to Jack. I'm so jealous of him. I had the most awful rows with him. They don't know about that, do they? Well, supposing I tell them. You didn't. You couldn't. Couldn't I? Uh, he's not here, I'm afraid. But if you have a message for him, I'm sure to be seeing him. No, thank you. Only too glad, you know. Clinton, things are beginning to hum. You will pardon my saying so, sir, but do you think we should have let him get away? Yes, neither of them are ready to talk yet. When they are, we'll be waiting for them. I see. 
You don't, but you will. Yes, sir. Well, what do we do now, sir? Well, first, a call to the yard. I want Molly in trail. I want to know absolutely everything he does. Clinton, while our cabinet minister's in a crisis, we're going barking up another gum tree. Sorry, miss. Been the juice of a time, Clinton. Well, I had to get in quietly, sir. Oh, I like this. I was always fond of stinks. I hope you didn't do this, Clinton. Don't think so, sir. Do you suppose it's quite all right, sir, breaking in here without a warrant, sir? Oh, yes, it's a heaven sent chance. You can have a good look round in peace and quiet. You know, everybody has two sides to their nature. For instance, who'd have thought that... Who'd have thought that a clown like this... Who'd have thought that... Don't take any notice of me, sir. Thank you very much. What I was going to say was, who'd have thought that a clown like Sitchley could have a place like this? However, that's the policeman's life, isn't it? Seeing what a fellow looks like on the other side. Sometimes it's not a very pleasant sight. No, sir. What's the matter? A f... A frog? Why a frog? Come on, let's get it. Go straight down the middle. Don't get your dead hands on it, you can have a fool. Hot stockings, I'm hung up. Don't do it. Slowly does it. Gently. And got him. Uh, visitors. Better open the door then, Clinton. Here, Freddy, go in there and stay put. How are you, Mr. Rail? Huh. Rail. Hello, Inspector. What are you doing down here? Well, I might ask you the same thing, Rail. Well, I think uh, Sedgley was a bit upset about that ragging today. I just came down to tell him there was no ill feeling. Who's that? Oh, that's just Freddie. Nobody you'd know. Mm. You, um... Uh, you come here often? Yes, off and on. We've known each other a long time. Now, isn't this a bit against regulations, Inspector? <laughs> Only slightly. I wanted to have a talk with you, Rail. I'm glad of this opportunity. Oh, I was wondering when you'd get round to it. You know I hated Doyce, don't you? I did imagine something of the sort, yes. No doubt you thought I resented his taking my place in the team. Well, I did. But Doyce was a better player than I, and we wanted to win. And I'll tell you something else, Inspector. Doyce deserved to die. He was rotten through and through. Whoever did it did an executioner's job. Why? He didn't know Doyce. He only wanted what other people already had. Gwen Lee, for instance. You knew that she and Doyce... No, she didn't say a word. I merely guessed. Morning's a good sort, Inspector. I watched Doyce play his filthy game. He only did it to show his power over women. It gave him some sort of distorted pleasure to take Gwen away from Phil. He ruined two lives. He deserved to die. But I don't think you'll ever find out who did it. Oh, why? Well, you're up against team loyalty. It's not business, something you don't often meet. You knew Sessley well, and you were a friend of Morrings. Didn't you know? We used to play together. It was a team called Saxon Rovers. And Doyce played in it too. Yes? Quiet. Is that Freddy again? Yes. Sessley. <laughs> Hello, Sedgley. Oh, what, sir? I hope you don't mind. We, we just dropped in. At least, um, Clinton did. Well, what do you want? Oh, nothing much. We just want to see the sort of place you worked in. Microchemistry, isn't it? Yes, I do analysis for various firms. Quite a paying job, I believe. Not bad. I get along. 
For the money Doyce gave you? Who told you that? Well, Freddy did. He told me you were carrying out research in alkaloids. There's money in that, isn't there? Where is it, Sitchley? I don't know what you're talking about. No? You'll have to know a bit of everything in my job. This thing measures the heartbeats of frogs, isn't it? You don't need vivisection for microchemistry. You got Doyce to back you. Maybe you persuaded Kindler to put him in the team for the big match. You knew Doyce wanted that. You told him there was a fortune in this research. He gave you money. Clinton, you got the figures. Yes, sir. February 24th, yes, 120 pounds. April 19th, yes, 70... Never mind the rest. The grand total's 875 pounds. Perhaps Doyce was getting worried about his money. Wondering how long it'd be before he'd see a return. He had nothing to worry about. Well, I, I knew I could do it. And you did. You produced a new drug that nobody's heard of yet. That's baffled the police analysts. Well, Setchley, where is it? It's gone. I've made a sample, digitalin-6. It's deadly stuff. You're telling me. Don't be a fool, Dick. Can't you see what he's trying to do? Anyone might have taken it, Inspector. Most of the Trojan team have been down here at one time or another. Team loyalty, eh, Rail? Now listen, Setchley, you owe Doyce money. You were onto something worth a fortune that Doyce would have shared. Doyce was killed by a new and deadly poison. Your digitalin-6 is missing from your laboratory. Well, you're an intelligent fellow. There's no need for me to tell you the spot you're in. Your only way out is to find it, Sedgley, and find it quick. I told you it was Sedgley, sir. Sedgley, my foot. Has anybody reported Murray's movement yet? Oh. There he is. There he is. Mr. Philip. Mr. Philip. Come on down. The young lady's here to see you. Oh, Gwen. Good old, what are you doing here? Here. Oh, Budge, be an angel and clear out for a moment. I right, go along with you. <laughs> Is it about Gwen? Yes, but... Oh, can't we forget about her, Inga? Oh, please, Phil. When you went, she was saying such... such horrible things. Phil, I was frightened. What did she say? She said that you had quarrels with Jack Doyce. And, and if the police knew... Go on. If they knew, then they think you killed Doyce. Do you believe that, Inga? No, Phil, no. Please, Phil, don't you see? You are in danger. Yes, you are. He's a very clever man, that Inspector Slade. He's making trouble, so Gwen should tell him everything. He think you did it. But, Inga, what can I do? Please come and talk with her. It's crazy to think that I killed Jack. It's fantastic. What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I, I go. You're not going back there. Well, I have nowhere else to go. Wait a minute. Budge? Oh, Budge? Yes, dear? Fudge, huh. can Miss Larson spend the night here? She's got nowhere else to go. Oh, never mind, darling. Come on. You can sleep in my own room. Oh, good old Budge. <laughs> I shan't be long. I'm going to put away the car. Inspector Slade's office. It's Thompson said he was trailing Murring. What? Murring slipped his trail, sir. Oh, give me that. You clumsy, blithering idiot. I suppose you were making out your expense list. Well, how long has he been lost? Well, find him! Morning's been lost for an hour. We've got to find him. We've got to bring in Gwen Lee. Come on. What the devil do you think you're doing? Waking all the place up? Police! No answer, sir. All right, break it in.
No one is, huh? No. Digital in six, sir. Well, there's no need to look any further, Clinton. We've come full circle. Oh, God, it's suicide, sir. Not on your life. Joyce. Joyce. She must have been in a hurry when she took these. Mostly bills. What's this? The body was found lying floating in the East Foss. Well, that's all there is. Is here? Yes, it's inside. Sounds like Thompson, sir. Mm. Oh, nice work, Thompson. Never mind the alibi. I'll put you in the chorus on Wednesday. He's back now, sir. I bet he is. He returned to his house ten minutes ago. That Swedish girl staying there too. Shall I have him brought in? No, we'll leave him till tomorrow. Very good, sir. Well, Clinton, at least we know why Gwen Lee was murdered. Because she knew who really killed Doyce. She heard him quarrel with Doyce on Saturday morning, and the murderer knew that for the first time at the golf club. Then it was Morring, sir. Morring must have quarreled with Gwen Lee after we left here this morning, and tonight the Larson girl went to warn Morring that Gwen Lee was threatening to talk. A desperate job, Clinton. Two murders in two days. Mr. Whittaker. Morning, Sergeant. Where, where's young Mulling? In the shooting box. Where's that? Over there. Thanks. Here, Mr. Mulling. Phil! Phil, don't make me come here. They think I told One you. One moment. I... What the devil have you been doing, Slade? That's what I'm asking you, Mulling. What did you do when you left your house at midnight last night? What would you do with a policeman following you? Well, give him the slip. Well, that's what I did. Yes, but in this case, it's rather unfortunate. What did Miss Larson tell you when she came to see you last night? I tell you, it was nothing. What are you getting at, Slade? She came to warn you. Told you that Gwen Lee was threatening to tell the police that you killed John Doyce. True. That's a damn lie. You went out. Broke loose from the man who was following you. Slade, what happened last night? Gwen Lee was found murdered. Gwen? Dead? I didn't kill her, Slade. I'd like to believe that, Morning. I told you it was unfortunate. You had a grievance against Doyce. He was killed. You quarreled with your fiancé. And she didn't last long either. And you can't account for any of your actions. Looks bad, doesn't it, Clinton? Highly incriminating, sir. Phil did not do it. Please, he did not. It was all my fault. I was frightened and I went to him and... Oh, Phil. Clinton, better take Miss Larson to a taxi. Very good, sir. Well, what are you going to do, arrest me? I could, but I won't. No, I ain't going to let you play tomorrow. Fine, then I'll start picking out my next victim. <laughs> no, I'll risk that. I know exactly how you feel. i got a show of my own coming off tomorrow. I should hate to miss it. What? 
Great Scott, you're almost a human being, Inspector. Oh, thank you. Have you ever seen that before? It looks like one of our team notices. Kindred sends them out. Yes, that's his typewriter. The R jumps. You played for the Saxon Rovers at Whitechester, didn't you? Yes. What's that got to do with it? I thought perhaps you knew. Look here, Inspector. Is this true about Gwen Lee? It's terrible. Morning. You better get have a rub down. Yes, off you go, Philip. Practice is over now. We don't want to have you catching cold. Don't worry, Inspector. I shan't let you down. Come on, Frank. I've sent her home, sir. Oh, thanks. We know there were four men at Whitechester. One was murdered, and then there were three. I wonder if there was a fifth. Hinton, quick. Where's that match program for last Saturday? There it is, sir. It's been under our noses all this time while we've been barking up gum trees. Here we are. Mr. Francis Kindlet. The Secretary of the Trojans, Mr. Francis uh, of the Canadians. Uh, Kindlet also founded the well-known Saxon Rovers at Whitechester in 1930. Did you get it, Sergeant? No, sir. The fifth man. That fellow was right. What's his name? Rail. He said we were up against team loyalty. Clinton, do you remember anything about Roman history? What, sir? The Romans colonized England. They built camps, Castra, Chester, Whitechester. They surrounded them with moats, posse, posses. That cutting, sir. The East Foss. Now, Doyce received this the Thursday before the match. I bet every hat in my wardrobe it was sent as a warning. Get on to the Whitechester police. Find out if that cutting was from the local paper. Get the details. By getting nearer the motive. Hello? Revenge. Hello. Whitechester police speaking. Right. found lying floating in the East Foss. About seven o'clock in the morning, I saw her in the East Foss on my way to work. Directly I had a look, I knew it was Mary Kindlet. I couldn't have made any mistake, sir, because I passed quite close to the body, and I've often seen the young lady about death was due to drowning. The dead girl had been in the fosse for several hours. Yes, I tried to cheer her up. That's why I took her to the dance. But she seemed very depressed, and about halfway through, I found that she'd left. Later, I heard that her body had been found. I found the ring on her dressing table. Well, there was a chain attached to it, and I guess that she wore it round her neck. Her mother had just died, and Mary knew that if she got married, I, I should be left alone. I think she wanted to keep it secret for the time being. There are many unsatisfactory features in this case. Why has the fiancé not come forward? Now, before giving their verdict, members of the jury must ask themselves, are they satisfied with the evidence? And the verdict? Accidental death. Then the gossips get to work. Suicide. Kindlet can't stand it. He leaves the place. He did it, sir. Deutsch drove the girl to suicide. Kindlet got him into the team. He knew suspicion would rest on Morning Rail and Setsley because they all had motives. And then team loyalty would keep the story quiet. It was all set for him, sir. Kindlet's your man. Can you see her, Mr. Kindlet, sir? Wouldn't it be funny if Mr. Kindlet called? Show him in. Come in, sir. Oh, hello, Kindlet. Glad to see you. Hello, Slade. Look here, Slade. The... There's something I've got to tell you. I kept quiet about it up to now, but since poor Gwen Lee's... Was it about this? Oh, well, you know already. Oh, you better have a drink. What, here, sir? Oh, I think so, Clinton. Purely medicinally, of course. Get some glasses, will you? Help yourself, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. Now listen, Kindlet, you yourself say that you now hold Deutsch responsible for your daughter's death, and yet you put him in the Trojan team for the Arsenal match. Well, I love football. It's my whole life. He was a brilliant player, and the team needed Deutsch. 
Does that make sense? Perhaps, but I'm only a policeman. What about the others? There were three Trojans in the old Saxon Rovers, apart from Doyce. Was your daughter particularly fond of anyone? The whole team adored her. Morring, Setchley and Rayleigh included. What do you mean? You said something in your evidence about a ring. Yes, on our dressing table. But your daughter didn't tell you that she was engaged. Well, no, but... Then you can't be certain. You were the only person to see this ring, Kindlet. Are you quite sure that you didn't mistake it for something else? Well, I suppose it's possible. It was such a long time ago. I really don't know. Are you quite sure that this ring existed? But, sir, what are you getting at, Slade? This. The only reason we have for believing in the existence of the fiancé is your evidence about the ring. Give me another ring, Clinton. Yes, sir. One last question, Kindlet. We policemen sometimes have rotten jobs. We get to like people instead of treating them as chessmen. I want you to help me. Do you know who killed John Doyce? I've told you all I can, Slade. Oh, well, tomorrow's the deadline. I shall have all the proof I need for an arrest after the match. But why the fishing hat? Uh, this is the hat I make my arrests in. All set, sir. Oh, let's go. Oh, George, don't forget to do your stuff. Hello? That's right, for you, Inspector. Oh, thank you. Hello? Yes? What? Good heavens! All right, I'll be there. Goodbye. You may not know it, but this is going to be your big day, Sergeant. Look here, you fellows. Try and forget what happened, if you can. Play your usual game, but remember, today we're not playing to, to beat the Arsenal or anything of that sort, or to break a record. We're just playing to show that, well, whatever happens, the game still goes on, do you see? That's all. I know you'll all do your best. Oh, hello, George. I'll help. Um, good luck. Oh, thanks. Good afternoon, Trojans. Oh. It's that man again. For the last time, I hope. Well, this business isn't cleared up yet, and maybe it never will be. However, all I want to do is to wish you a great game. And no hard feelings about what's gone before. <coughs> oh. Inspector, may we have the treatment room open? We always have to have a match day, you know. Yes, of course. No use to us. Thank you, Lance. Thank you. Come on, boys. It's time you're up. Don't get on my shirt again. Just play your usual game and you'll be all right. That's where stuck in. Coming, Frank. Yes. Clinton, get the bowl down. Very good, sir. Just a little trap, Clinton, to catch our murderer red-handed. Just let him try and get his ring back now without giving himself away. Put that away, please. What is that stuff, sir? Romophenol. What's it for? Take your glove off. We'll soon find out. Now, Sergeant, I want you to go to the trainer's box. I'll join you there in a minute. Very good, sir.
Inspector? He went half an hour ago, Sarge. What? Went? What do you mean? Well, he was called back to headquarters on another job. He said for you to carry on. He left you this. Said it would bring you luck. Blimey. Scotland Yard. Give me Inspector Slade. Quick. I don't know where he is. You'll have to find him. Yes, yes. What? Who is it? Oh, it's you, Clinton. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. What do I do now, sir? Do? Well, you can't do anything till the ring's gone from the horsehair bowl. It's still there, sir. Oh, that's interesting. Kindle... Yes, that's all right. Kindle is taking his time. If it is Kindle it. Look, wait till after half time. Slice some lemon, Sergeant. That's sharp. Come on, Carter. Give these boys a rub down. It's gone, sir. Well, of course it's gone, you fool. That's why I put it there. Now arrest the man who's Now arrest the man who's taken it. That'll be the murderer because he's the only person who knew it was there. Yes, sir. But how, how am I to know who's taken it, sir? Well, look at your hands, you idiot. Blimey, the brand who sells, sir. The brand of Cain Clinton. Now find someone to match and arrest him. Goodbye. Thank your fellow rails like a man possessed. Does he always play like that? Well, I'll trouble you again. Certainly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well played, old man. What's happened to your head? Huh? It's as black as ink. Clinton, I knew you could do it. Well, of course. 
course it was Rail. He was Mary Kindler's fiance. He killed Doyce for driving Mary Kindler to suicide. And he killed Gwen Lee to stop her from talking. Yes, sir. I see, sir. Owen oh, Clinton. Good morning. My congratulations. But how did you know? Elementary, my dear Watson. Arson, come to the show tonight. Wardrobe. Props. Now then, boys, come along. We've got to get this show on tonight. Thank you.